Good afternoon, friends. Flow Kolkata welcomes you and wishes you a very happy October and the rest of the year as well. Before we begin today, I'd like to introduce to you Flow uh, committee members Shweta Nathani and Shraddha Agarwal, who have also coordinated this event. I'm proud to say Shweta and Shraddha are multi-talented and are two strong pillars of our team this year. Hi, Shweta. Hi, Shraddha. Hi, Sunira. Hi, Shraddha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I like to thank you both for always being uh, there for us. And I want you to share your experience in coordinating events for Team Flow this year, and in particular, this event with these two young stars. Sure, Sunira. So I think this year, being a part of Team Flow has been nothing less than a great year of learning and growth. I think we all face challenging times as an organization. But I think under your able leadership, Sunira, and I think the cohesiveness of the team really made everything very smooth sailing. I must say that each team member actually motivates you to up your skill and do your best, which really sometimes is what you need, uh, absolutely what you need. And as far as I think coordinating with these two young dynamic boys, I think uh, they've just inspired me to do my best and uh, I think to do my bit for the environment and the planet, I think. Thanks, Shweta. How about you, Shweta? Do you want to share I something? I would completely tend to agree with every word of what Shweta said. It has been an absolutely enriching experience. So much of learning, so much bonding. It's been like uh, absolutely amazing. It's been amazing. And so, Nira, hats off to you to, in these tough times, you've motivated everyone, the team, done so many events in such a short time. So really, really nice. And these two boys, no words can describe them because they are such responsible citizens. They are an inspiration to us and all the other youngsters and all in front of us. And seriously, kudos to them. Thank you both. I, and I, I agree with every word you've said about these two young people. Um, and I, I want you both to know that all the efforts that you guys do motivate me to keep going. Um, I also wanted to know, I ask you a little bit about your passions, what things you're passionate about. How does your uh, you know, experience at flow and your passions, uh, do they have a sym symbiotic relationship? Tell us about sure. it. Yeah. So I'm very passionate about food. I, uh, I really enjoy cooking. I love um, trying out all the diverse cuisines of all the different, different local food, international food. I love curating menus for all the weddings of my close friends and family. So that is what I really enjoy doing. And of course, with Flo, we've got a great platform. We had a, such an amazing event with uh, the most renowned restaurant of uh, India, Indian Accent. We got a chance to learn from them. We've had some other very nice events. So I think Flo is a platform where, you know, whichever uh, whatever your interests are, you find some place to satisfy that interest. So thank you, that, Sunira. That's absolutely correct. Um, you know, I don't think we are, we can wait to taste some of the menus that you would be designing as soon as things open up. I hope that's going I'm to be sure. Soon. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> as for me, uh, Sunira, I think, you know, I've actually been always very passionate about organizing events per se. So I think uh, it couldn't be better to be, uh, you know, I think it couldn't, I couldn't have had it better to be a part of Team Flow because it really gives me the right opportunity to actually organize such events, you know, with uh, whatever we, you know, we would be expected to do. And actually uh, so much uh, effort is put into each minute detail that, you know, it really makes it worth the while. I think it's uh, it's been amazing. It's been really a remarkable learning experience for sure. I think it uh, it really uh, totally defines my passions completely. And we at Flo are really happy to have your organizing skills with us, Shweta. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shweta. Thanks, Shada. You both Thank know you. that Thank your, you. efforts, your efforts are my strength and the strength of Team Flo. And Absolutely, our pleasure, Sunira. Thank you. Moving on, friends. Jimmy Carter famously said, "Like music and art." Love of nature is a common language that can transcend political or social boundaries. Yet today we find the very fabric of our societies being ripped apart. 
by callous disregard for the very earth we reside in, the home for us and for the future generations to come. It is indeed the ultimate test of man's conscience, his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations, whose words of thank, thanks he may not even hear. Can we hear the voice of our inner conscience, the voice of reason, the call for preservation of our todays, and more importantly, our tomorrows? Can we be the change we want to see? Friends, I welcome you today to our talk, One Step Greener, with a thought of just that, one step towards understanding what and how to make small changes to care for our world. We have two young people here today, Rihan and Nava Garwal, who have founded One Step Greener, an NGO which strives for zero waste per future and aims to combat pollution by working on waste management, recycling, and tree plantations. Vihan and Nav Agarwal are the first and only Asians who have won the prestigious Children's Climate Prize Award in Sweden and the Global Social Leaders Award in UK. Their work has been featured in various publications across India. Welcome, Vihan. Welcome, Nav. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us today. I wonder what inspired you both to take this amazing initiative. What inspired you to be the change you want to see? So, um, you know, whenever we were young, we always used to love nature. We used to go for wildlife parks. And, you know, going to a jungle and then suddenly coming back to a city, you just wonder what have we been doing wrong? Like, you see the vast amount of animals, the vast amount of birds, the vast amount of tree species, and you just come back to this place where all you can see is just lands, uh, is uh, uh, is uh, buildings after buildings after buildings. And, you know, we actually realized that, you know, at a point of time, you know, everything was, uh, you know, um, what... Uh, uh, a forest and we also see the tremendous negative impact that humans have had on our planet uh, along with that we see um, we saw the tremendous amount of pollution in delhi which affected me personally which was uh, i'm asthmatic and because of that the air pollution was a huge part of my life and that's why you know when the the connection when the gazipur landfill in 2017 caught on fire and kill two people, the connection between waste and air pollution, which was affecting me so much and I didn't know how to solve it, became apparent to us and that's when we started. So then we saw a bit more and we found out that more than 30% of Delhi's air pollution is directly contributed by waste. And that's just about the pollution. And there are various other problems associated with waste in our home city. Wow, I mean, I, I really appreciate the way you both have, uh, you know, gone behind what is the reason behind everything. And you're, you're making those changes, those small steps that we're talking about. And I know that you, you guys have been working on talking to various organizations and inspiring people to do the same. And I'm sure today you will be inspiring many more. Thank you. In conversation with these young stars, we have Swati Saraugi. Swati Saraugi is the founder of Swarnam International School and has over 11 years of experience in education, both in Singapore and in India. She's an MA in psychology, bachelor's and master's in education from Australia. She's also an alumnus of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. She is also the territory head of the Early Childhood Association and a board member of the governor, uh, uh, is a member of the Board of Governors of the Heritage College. Along with education, Environment is a cause close to her heart. Hi, Swati. Hi, Sunira. Thank and you for being here. We are so glad that you're here because you're the right person to take this forward. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Navan Bihan. Hi. Hello. Hi, Swati. So, you know, Confucius has famously said that if your plan is for a year, plant rice. If your plan is for 10 years, plant trees. And if your plan is for 100 years, educate children. And I'm so happy that, you know, today two children are going to be educating us. This is something to so look forward to. You, of course, have already done the planting trees part of it. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to be talking to Flo and Flo children today. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of takeaways for all of us over here. So um, 
um, Vihan, you're about 16, right? And now you're 13. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. So let's get started. When did you get started and how? So uh, what happened was, you know, then after we made the connection between waste and pollution, we thought of a way to cancel out the waste from actually going into the landfills. So then we looked, uh, we researched a lot and we found out that the best way is to segregate your waste and then to recycle it or send it to manufacturers who will recycle it and reprocess it. So that's when we basically came up with the idea that um, and actually realized that a lot of the manufacturers and the people who were responsibly recycling it were not in fact um, you know taking waste from individual households like ourselves. So initially we just wanted our own waste which we had segregated to not reach the landfill. So at least we yeah. won't contribute. So the yeah. initial thought process was never, okay, let's get 100 people involved. It was just that let's get us, our waste, never to reach the landfill. And that's when we realized that, you know, they're not going to take it from us. And that's when we realized that we needed a lot more waste. And that's when we got a lot of people involved. So as they typically say, you know, every great start movement starts with some tiny step. And you two have absolutely shown us. So I believe now you're, the waste is getting collected across colonies. And yeah. you're also doing tree planting. And there's a park you're maintaining as well now in Delhi? Yeah. So yeah. we're maintaining our tree plantation in a park. So we're not maintaining a park. We're working currently in 13 colonies in Delhi. We're yeah. expanding now as well. After coronavirus, we're expanding to Gurgaon. And um, we're looking at a couple more cities as well. Great. Can we see a video about the landfill that you all came across? Yeah. That this is not a hill in the middle of Delhi, that. but a mountain of waste. All of South Delhi's waste ends up here in Okla. The stench that fills the air is unbearable. Yet you see workers forced to work in such unhygienic and inhumane conditions. Methane is released in the air and some part of the landfill is constantly burning, adding to our pollution problems. Did you know you contribute to this every day? But by only taking one simple step of segregating your waste at home can help in reducing this mountain considerably and can even remove it altogether. Right. Right. What, why is recycling such a challenge? Yeah, so um, actually what happens in our country is that all of our waste is you know they tell us that huh there's a big uh neela ka neela dustbin hai, and then there's one green dustbin put your recyclable waste in one and you put your wet waste which is your kitchen waste in one now what actually happens is that waste then goes into a truck and is mixed in the process and you know a lot of people right now have the ideology if it's out of a house it's out of our mind mm -hmm. so it's it's that thing which you really have to try to change and that systematic change you know it's really hard to actually implement it even doing one talk two talk three talks you still have to show them a source of impact for them to really listen so i think um Nav touched upon this really well of the fact that there is the mindset that if it's outside our house it's out of our minds which has to change which is the fundamental first thing that needs to be to change for recycling to become big in our country. The second um, very important thing is now talked about is that in transit, the waste is actually not kept segregated. So if you don't have waste segregated, then the recyclability of the waste reduces a lot. So if, for example, you mix plastic with an orange, all right, obviously the orange has water and then that plastic is going to get spoiled and then the recyclability of that plastic reduces. Same for paper, paper more so where paper, you can't even use it after a point, you know, if it's wet, right? So that's the second problem. And the third problem is that right now, because there is, and it's like a cycle, because of these problems, there's the third problem where the recyclers in our country, even though they can manage all the waste that is generated from India, don't because they're not getting it. And then buy waste from outside India, from China, from the US, from Canada, now that China's banned imports, is a lot of that waste is coming to India. So it's really a problem that causes another problem. And um, 
also you know that mindset has to be changed absolutely and we all know mindsets are the most difficult thing to change so yes. yeah yeah and now with covid there's going to be even more disposable waste generated you know single plastic has to be used at this point of time in fact it has to be encouraged uh what do you think will be the impact of this and do you have any tips on what we can do as citizens to counter it perhaps i think um quite uh, honestly yes single use plastics will be used especially for medical equipment you can't obviously substitute that there is some ways you can substitute it while you know obviously not wearing a plastic mask while going outside as individual citizens and then use a cloth mask or something like that which to a small degree does help every small step as we kind of tell people helps um you know but i think you know we just have to find a disposal disposal system in our country the government has to do this because private entities aren't allowed to do a lot of things that concern medical waste etc right. so the government has to wake up the government all around the world governments have to wake up and say that you know this is a problem we need to solve this we need to put incinerators out there that can incinerate the waste as well as the virus and also after incinerating that that the fumes are not released in the environment are instead you know reused for something else rather than you know pollute so i think obviously our dependence on single use plastic instead of reducing as we have to has increased but that doesn't mean there aren't any solutions to it not you wanted to add something no it's fine okay okay um a lot of actually like you rightly said at the beginning of it you know we even if we try into segregation we really not very successful because um as soon as it's out of our houses it just gets all mixed up but even inside our houses sometimes we don't know what to do and how to do it and of course we have to train our household uh, staff you know how to do the segregation so can we please watch a video on segregation and understand more about it so so you have two kinds of waste your mixed waste and so there's so this is the wet waste there's wet waste is basically the waste which comes out of your kitchen like uh, vegetables fruits cooked food leftovers this is all your wet waste this is all your dry waste this is what can be recycled this is your e waste which also can be recycled um but you have to get certain permissions for it So the first step is obviously you have to segregate most of the different kinds of things. Uh, you have to wash all your plastics, your bottles, your juices, your oils. Then you have to empty all your plastic grocery racks, uh, wraps, and stuff. Your cardboard should be, uh, you know, you have to clean the residue. Uh, you can, you should stack your magazines, your papers, your story books. Um, you can store your papers in a box. so these are of course the the reasons why you should recycle and you know you should give it to certified recyclers with pollution control board certificate so with our organization whenever we get waste we always sell it yes we do sell it we sell it to recycle uh, people who are certified and those funds help us fund the whole process of picking up the waste of segregating the waste in our warehouse as well as transporting it to recyclers Okay, let's go over this a little slowly. You actually uh, buy waste. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'll explain the th uh, thing. So what happens is I'm just going to uh, tell you what and how we do stuff. So first is obviously the training in the workshop where we teach people how to segregate your waste, just as was shown in the video, into your dry waste. We pick up your dry waste, which is as we as it showed, uh, metal, e-waste, glass, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. After that, we'll ask you if you want to sign up for a pickup, and if you do want to sign up for a pickup, we'll send you a message on WhatsApp or iMessages or whatever is convenient for you, and we're gonna send you a roster on the date and on the time we're gonna come and pick up your waste. So then we'll come to your home, and according to the amount of waste you give us, we'll actually pay you. 
so you know this becomes an incentive for people to actually do it and you know all the household people they don't really want to touch this waste and stuff but when they get to know that the money is involved they start actually segregating their waste very well and we've seen this happening and then after that we take it to our warehouse where we then micro segregate the waste and then send it to pollution control board send, uh, um companies which then recycle it and reprocess it. so um, another thing we do take e waste as well which we've got certain certifications for etc where we do give it to um uh, we give it to really good uh, really proper recyclers because e-waste is something that if it falls into the wrong hands it can have a devastating impact on a lot of people so we do recycle e-waste as well and a lot of other dry waste as enough pointed out that's our process the whole process we do charge 200 rupees a month as a subscription charge so so that we know that you're serious about the thing uh, otherwise we've seen people not segregate their waste people send our guys away when we come to pick up the waste so all of those things can be disheartening that's why we keep the 200 rupees also the 200 rupees is for funding the employment of the people who come to your house the cost of the truck the cost of keeping a warehouse the cost of sending the waste the cost of writing the rosters the cost of all of those things which we also uh, yeah. we also really which we do. also um, for a lot of people that 200 rupees a month is covered by the money that we give them so most of the time um, the amount of waste we take from you, we pay you more than we're actually taking from you. So that is, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Absolutely. And 200 is a very small amount when you think that you're actually contributing to even saving the environment. You're providing employability. I mean, that's that's a totally win-win situation. So you guys right. actually have a warehouse, you have trucks, you have all the entire setup. Exactly. Yeah. And completely zero cost. So with all of this, we're not losing any money. We're... Um, you know, zero cost completely. And and of course, you're still in school. And uh, from yeah. what I know, Han, you are in IB that is extremely demanding in class 11, if I'm right. Yes. yes? And now you're in eight, yeah. right? So how are you juggling your school and studies and this entire business now, you know, and not business in the sense of making money, but business in the sense of all the different aspects of it, you know, the so, entire management and all of that. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, Vihan used to really help me out uh, a lot in maybe grade nine, grade ten. But after he's become, he's gone to IB. I've been taking the charge a bit more. So you know, we've been uh, so after school. Normally, I try to finish school right off, finish all the homework and stuff right after school. Then after that, normally um, check if I have any tests or anything coming up, prepare for them. Then according to what one step reader needs, so say if I have to make social media posts, say if there's a customer who's unsatisfied today, um, say if there's one person who didn't, uh, who sent out first people away, or a customer who didn't know how to segregate their waste, all of these things. So it really depends from a day-to-day -day basis how much time I spend and how we can handle one step greener. And yeah. So I think even for me, um, even in IB, it being as especially as demanding as it is, I think for me at least what's always worked is I never had a strict timetable for myself. Um, so even when I have school ob obligations, I try to finish it as soon as possible so that I free up as much time as possible for one step, you know, because that is my passion. So, um, you know, you kind of make space for your passion. So it's not like, you know, it's something that's weighing on my mind that I have to do it. But it's just something that I managed to do and I managed to do well. So right now we I've been having a more of a managerial and an overall um, situation awareness where I'm uh, we're working with digitizing a lot of the processes and getting a lot more volunteers um, from all over the world as well. Uh, children. Yes, um, who are helping us? So that's that's more of what we do right now. At least what I do, um, and you know, I make time for it. So if you know, time is never an issue. Wow, wow, wow! And and uh, I know that you both are you know wildlife photographers. Uh, yeah. Vihan is debater, soccer player. You have the team into in current affairs. You're in Ashoka Youth Venture for the year as well. Yes. So I was um, up till 
yeah, March, April um, this year, which was quite, quite a really, it's a really cool fellowship, which obviously, even after the, the period is over, you get it, you know, are part of the network. So it was meeting a lot of like-minded individuals all over India who are doing such great work in so many other um, fields of the same age as me. And now you're on the school basketball team. You're fond of debating and wildlife, and you're also learning how to play the drums. You're really yeah. packing a lot into 24 hours, both of you, I must say. Yes. <laughs> we, we try to make time for everything, balance it out so don't, we don't get burnt out. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. It's absolute inspiration. I'm sure you're seeing the comments that are coming in. Everybody's just talking very, quite flawed by your you know, your commitment and your passion to this. So you said that the air pollution, 30% of it is uh, related to soil waste. Um, so it's not actually 30% approximately depends on the year um, because we have crop burnings as well that occur. So in Delhi, it's roughly between 20 and 30% directly contributed by dry waste, which uh, I mean, um, solid waste, which means uh, both you know, fires in the landfill, burnings of the waste, um, the natural, when obviously when waste decomposes, it releases methane and other gases, so that as well adds to it. Right, right. You know, the Constitution of India says, you know, the Article 51A establishes that it should be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife, and to have compassion for uh, living creatures. Have you received help from the government and other quarters or actually have there been an impediment? So we haven't received help per se um, from the government. We have received, so in the sense that when we needed help for our plantation, our tree plantation and we needed land, the government did help us in some ways there. Um, we've also been recognized by the government, which is another thing uh, where the, the president of India invited us to meet uh, the King of Sweden and Queen of Sweden along with him and his wife. That's superb, my God. Your ambassadors. Yes, now would you like to add anything? Oh, uh, I think he covered all of uh, what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. The impact that you've had is absolutely overwhelming. I'm going to, uh, you know, call up some numbers. Uh, uh, please tell us what those numbers actually mean in, in a way that we understand. Um, so they, from, you, you have... 188,000 kgs of waste, including 40,000 kgs of paper, 18,000 kgs of cardboard, 9,000 kgs of plastic, 33,000 kgs of glass, 3,000 kgs of metal, 2,000 plus kgs of e-waste. In the process, it saved 3,000 trees and 7, 13 lakh liters of water. I mean, these are mind-boggling figures. So uh, what we, we we're working currently with um, around a thousand homes, thousand individual homes. And, you know, with just a thousand homes, we've been able to, as you said, um, one lakh plus um, kgs. Right. Of, we've yeah. been able so, to. Yeah. And if you think yeah, about, yeah. yeah. So if you think about it, that 100,000 kgs of waste is actually equal. So that 100,000 kgs of waste could is equal to around 10 whole buses. That's the big buses, not the school buses, but the domestic buses where people go in. So 10 huge uh, buses filled with waste. And um, so, yeah, and with that, we've also been able to power around 80,000 Indian average homes for a whole day, with just by recycling. Yeah, so I think uh, the conversions where we talk about how much water we've saved, how many how many trees we've saved or planted, or how many uh, how many how uh, how much energy we've saved to power those many houses, it's I think it's because we haven't actually you know left the need for extracting those virgin resources because if you recycle, the need for producing that that same product reduces. So when that reduces, the virgin resources used to produce those projects, uh, uh, product, of course, is not needed. And that's exactly what we've kind of saved. So that means that, you know, just by recycling 100,000 kgs, which is 
roughly 100 tons, right? Um, Delhi produces 24,000 tons of waste a day. So that's saying that, you know, if so many, if a lot of more people join in with us, that can, you know, increase exponentially as well. So you guys need to start a chapter in Kolkata ASAP. Yes, we need as much support as we can get. Um, yes. So yeah, right now with COVID, obviously um, a lot of things have been delayed, but we are looking looking at Kolkata as well. Oh wow! So floor members and children who are listening, we are going to share their contact details, Navin Bihan's contact details later, their YouTube link and their uh, Instagram handles, and be great if we can actually make this uh, you know a bigger movement. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love for the kids listening to uh, listening to us um, to sign up with us on our on our website to sign up as volunteers because you can be a volunteer anywhere in India and help us. Yeah. Superb, superb, superb. Okay, so for a rapid fire round, this is like the little like a part of it. Um, uh, do you get any special perks in school? Any special bow from your friends or teachers? Not so, really. We yeah. get the opposite. <laughs> We we get um, more pressure in terms of like our teachers expect more of us and our friends keep on teasing us about it. So that's all fun games. We've got a lot of friends who joined in with us as volunteers as well. Now, so um, for me, the teachers have been they've not really like. I mean, a couple of times they've pulled me aside saying, "Yeah, you've done great work," but other than that, they normally just teach me like normal. I like everyone else in the class and my classmates also really encourage me they had a couple of them are volunteering with me and so yeah that's superb superb you're actually the change makers you are the change that you want to see as sunira said at the beginning of the show and i believe you've actually done an interview with dia mirza did you get yeah. a, a little bit after that or uh, put on a pedestal maybe no <laughs> Really, I mean, we haven't gone to school as yet, right? We're okay. still on online, yeah. but it has yeah, it got us a lot of recognition as well. So that was great. Yeah, that was, that we yeah. got a lot of people like because Dia Mirza is a really, I mean, she is she like you know her whole if it's not Instagram or her Facebook, it's basically about the environment. So the viewers who watch her like the environment or who are related to the environment. So. Because of that, more than just getting, you know, people who are following you, people who are saying good work, there are also people who will help you out. So we've got to know a couple of other NGOs and stuff who they really uh, want to work with us. We want to work with them. So, so yeah, it really did help us. Yeah. So who's been your greatest influence in this movement? Influence in what sense? Inspiration or someone we follow? Yeah, inspiration plus uh, somebody who's helped you also to, you know, maybe both ways. So I think for me personally, my inspiration was my grandfather, uh, my nana. He he's done such great philanthropic uh, philanthropic work with Akshay Patra and then Infinity Foundation as well. That he he you know his giving um, attitude really instilled something in me and wanted me like always from young age i've always wanted to do something so i think that really came from him so i've been really inspired by him um in terms of the environment i've been inspired by um jane goodall um her work has been absolutely amazing and i think both me and now are constantly inspired by her yeah and now your greatest inspiration so um i think i have three First one would be probably uh, my Nanu. You know, as Bihar said, he does so many things. He keeps on giving and, you know, he makes green buildings and stuff. And second would probably be my dad because he's the first one who actually took us to uh, national parks, to wildlife parks, who taught us that, look, this is this bird, this is that animal, and this is why we should care about the environment. He really instilled, you know, like caring about the nature, caring about nature, caring about the environment, and caring about the future. And I think, as someone who's who I followed, who's very who's doing environmental work, is probably David uh, Attenborough. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's a he basically makes documentaries on wildlife and uh, like everything, most all natural graphic documentaries and stuff. He's always voiced them, 
and you know i think that he's really reached out to many many people and i think he's a great inspiration sure um what's the uh, one new skill perhaps we've learned during lockdown i know you've already got a lot happening at your end but has the lockdown uh, you know something that you would remember out of these 8 months that we've been here now i think personally for myself the one skill or two skills i've actually learned is one is patience and the second is um you know depending on people so i was more reserved and i was very impatient before the lockdown but it's taught me patience in the sense that i've been able to wait for people to you know do things without really jumping the gun and the second i think um depending on people because i was always very independent with myself which led me not to trust anyone trust many people except the very close people which has changed completely and these are both need you know uh, things that nature teaches us all the time the interdependency of life and patience you have to plant and then you just have to wait forever to see the sun yeah, so no time in nature as well because of the lockdown so yeah true. that is true now anything special you picked up i mean uh, i think patience and uh, apart from that i'm not really sure right now um uh, because i i actually don't know i think maybe uh, a skill maybe um you know managing my work on the laptop like being more uh, proactive and having a schedule i i really like a schedule in the online situation of class because you know this class at this time this class at that time you have a 30 minute break this time at that time you have to do this assignment so i think it helped me manage my time better so as you can see we're like yin and yang he's completely into the order and then i'm just like let it be let's just go with the flow and that's the way of the world right yeah. that's exactly how it functions so you two are the first and only asians and indians to have won the prestigious children's climate prize in 2019 in sweden and like you mentioned earlier have met the king and queen there as well along with our president so that's absolutely super and you've been the global social leaders uh, you won that award in uk You've been yeah. awarded by Eco Hero Award USA, the Pro America Spirit of Community Awards, Diana Roll of Honor, Ashoka Youth Venture, Z Media, and YS Award. And your work has been published in Down to Earth, Times of India, Financial Express, Dainik Bhaskar. That's absolutely amazing. Can you please watch a video uh, to see the awards that you won? Yeah. um those Im- the, the Im- figures of the impact were i think a couple 7 8 months ago so they're not really updated uh, we've more than doubled the impact by now so yeah that's really fantastic tell us how it felt when you first heard that you were going to be re- receiving this award it, it was absolutely <laughs> i mean there no one to describe the excitement and you know actually for both of us we didn't believe it to be yeah. honest so, wait, so we- okay Yeah, yeah. No, cool. so we got an email saying that you know you're uh, among the top 15 people that uh, have actually who we actually shortlisted. And we were like, oh my god, wow! We actually came in the top 
we were jumping around we were like okay wow we got in the top 15 now uh, okay and we didn't think anything of it we didn't even get the top 10 top 5 or even win the prize at all i mean we had no idea what was going to happen because it was such a prestigious prize and then we got another email saying that we were in the top 5 so at that time we were like we were completely astonished we were like wow like we're in the top 5 and we made a video for them and to be frank me and him we saw the other ngos what they were doing and we thought we had no chance some of them were recycling oil um, to you for using buses and stuff some were making uh, compostable uh, sanitary pads some one person was doing grey water irrigation Uh, there were just so many people with so many great ideas, and uh, just more than we got an email saying, uh, "Can you please?" So they didn't tell us that we actually won the award. They told us a date that you know they would be paying for the air fees and everything to come to Sweden by this date. And when we had finalized our tickets, is then when they told us that we were the actual winners with uh, another person. So we were really excited for the whole journey, and it was. It was an incredible, incredible. Uh, I moment. I would put it better, but it was just like that. It was we didn't expect it. We didn't even apply for the award. Um, someone else nominated us for it, so we were absolutely, absolutely surprised. The saying goes, "No, the work speaks for itself." So you don't have to do it. Your work spoke for itself, and you did very rightly deserve it. We have a question from um, Adya Nathani. She is a student in class nine, and she works uh, with menstrual hygiene and health. So, as you mentioned now, so I would like to bring Adya. And Adya, please go ahead with your question for uh, Navan Bihar. Sure. Thank you. I'm absolutely inspired by the amazing work you both are doing, and I just had one question. So, what was the first roadblock you faced when you both started this initiative, and how did you overcome it? So, I think for both of us, the first roadblock, um, absolute first roadblock, was convincing people. Right? It was convincing not people outside our home. It was convincing the people inside our home. So, it was convincing my daddy, my dadu, my parents, and it was convincing everyone in the house. that you have to look at your trash you have to segregate your trash because no one does right how unnatural is it for us right now to take a plastic cup and put it in a different dustbin with a other than a banana peel right so it was convincing that and then the second part of that was how do we convince them to keep the waste at home yeah. so because we we didn't we didn't find anyone to give the waste to for 3 months somehow we convinced them to store the waste at home and we had a mini landfill in the back in our backyard as well so yeah the first challenge for us and to overcome it i think we did a lot of things we kind of blackmailed our way we tried to convince <laughs> our way to our family to try and get that started off with yeah and we then when they, yeah, and after that when they saw you know the huge amount of waste and then they realized the amount of waste that we were actually producing and after that they they it went to a recycler and that and from that thing we generated an impact and because they saw those figures they saw what just a single step of segregating your waste and keeping it at your home can do like keeping it at your home can do such a big thing so then they really understood about it. they understood and everything yeah so to answer your question in the shortest possible way <laughs> one we made everything possible to persuade them and secondly we showed them the impact we showed what doing it actually results in and by seeing it obviously there's no way to deny it then so sure, thank you so much all the best thank you for the question out there i believe you to started in your garage right by segregating yeah. yes yeah. yes now back now one the time after you know doing very simple things our grandfather came up to uh, came up to us and said it's either the trash in the house or you're out of the house <laughs> <laughs> so it was then we got into it actually the first was segregating in our own rooms so um according to a lot of people i'm a little crazy because i have up to five dustbins in my room so <laughs> it started with that we have some questions from the audience uh, so we just ask them 
How many trees have you planted so far? This is being asked by a seven-year-old. Ishid, I hope you're going to get uh, inspired to follow in their footsteps very soon. So um, we planted three trees last year, which we're still maintaining for three years. All native trees. We're trying to do a Miyawaki shy forest, which in sense means we're trying to increase the biodiversity cover and the amount of animals which are coming to that particular place. And this year we've planted over a thousand trees. So 1,350 trees. And which we're exactly. and we're keeping them for we've been maintaining them for three years. So that's the water, the margin you are gonna count. The 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 mitti, then um, you know if a tree falls, we try to get the bamboo. And till now, we've had a hundred percent survival rate also. So we've had no trees die, Ishir, and we have planted one thousand three hundred and fifty trees, and we plan to plant a lot more in the future. So the next question from the audience is. What is the future road in your journey? And do you have any plans to target schools so that they can implement in their houses and make the movement more stronger? Yeah. So right now we are operating in a couple of schools. And so I think schools are one of the best things ever because, you know, firstly, they're children. Secondly, there's the waste which is produced at home, at, uh, at schools. So first we get to, you know, teach the children what segregation waste, what what is segregation of waste, how you can recycle waste. And you know, when they understand, they go back to their homes, tell their parents about the organization. And also right now we're we're trying to pair up with as many schools as we can to, you know, um, make a better so, impact on the world. So uh, yeah, so we are targeting schools in the sense that they are one of the primary places that we are trying to get involved because uh, schools are such an important part, as Nav pointed out. Um, we, we are talking to, um, you know, right now, obviously online, we're talking to as many students as possible. We would love help in connecting to more schools, especially in Delhi, so that, you know, not only can the schools get involved with us, but the students can, you know, have practical experience segregating their waste and actually get, seeing it get recycled. So, yeah. So that's that's what we're planning to do, and we we are reaching out to as many schools as possible. Right now, we have a student volunteer base, so our student volunteers are reaching out to as many schools as possible. But if you can help, that would be great. Uh, so um, I think the lights went out, um, but I think we should be con we can uh, answer. We can the how does one recycle e-waste and stuff like uh, old electronic items? So what we try to do is first, uh, we get it to our warehouse, we strip apart the parts, circuit boards, etc. Not too much, but a bit. And because it's a bit, um, you know, dusty and it's a bit dangerous for people who are in professional to do so. And after that, we send it to recyclers who then, um, you know, do it further. An important note, um, we don't take batteries because batteries are extremely dangerous. We recommend you put batteries separately and take them directly to a recycler because transportation of them as well can be dangerous and we don't want to risk anyone in the process. But e-waste we do take um, and we do recycle it as well as now said. How does your peer group relate to this movement? Do they get motivated, inspired? Yeah, so our peer group does really get motivated and they do really, uh, you know, they do get inspired, but uh, a certain, some of them may just, uh, may uh, feel, uh, I don't know the word for it, but. Uh, yeah, so I think what Nav is trying to say is that, yes, the peer group does get involved in the movement and stuff, and I think, for a lot of the people in our grade and in Nav's grade as well as my grade, um, you know, seeing our movement has been a way for them to uh, really do something about the environment, do something to solve the problems of climate change like we've all been seeing, where a lot of youth feel um, like they don't have the power to do anything. So I think that is that is something that we've been able to do with this movement. How do you plan? Yeah. So, oh, I think 
you both are doing very well without me though uh, so i'm you know i'll just read out the question uh, swati is uh, i think her internet just failed her so any in any case how do you plan to educate the general mass about the importance of segregation as most people have the mindset of how does one person doing it help at all and this question so, is from pooja yes yeah. so right now we have an app where it's i think it's one of the best things we've ever done is because or uh, so what we do is after the waste is collected we put it into the app and we have a formula which will then derive that because you recycle this much waste this many virgin resources won't you know go into waste so then they as a user can see what they've done to help the environment so uh, answering the question uh, in the other way that like you know one person can't do anything we say we turn that phrase around and say that one at a time everyone can make a difference right so that's why our name is one step you know because one step does make a difference like this talk even if we reach 20 30 1000 people right that is one step right and then we'll reach more people and more people and more people and more people and that's that's the effort that we're trying to do so the next question is what's the most challenging factor in the whole process i think we addressed this earlier as well it's convincing people and getting people onto the program because we you know people stay on the program because it is something that they take value from but getting more people to hear about the program to get more people involved in the program has been the most challenging aspect for us till now um and we love support in that like this talk has been that's great that's great i think swati is back and i'm going to let her continue uh, asking the questions oops yeah so um sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, go ahead uh, swati i'm so sorry about that technological issues as they say you know getting stuck in the jam is the new uh, uh, my internet wasn't working so yeah um i think we um do we have do we have more questions or just questions sunira i think that was the last no i think we don't have any more audience question and uh, either do we if you want to yeah so i would just yeah as the last uh, you know comment from my side i just wanted to remind our audience that we don't inherit the earth from our fathers we borrow it from our children and these children are actually showing us the way forward it's really time for us as adults to take the initiative forward as much as we can and to bring back a more sustainable lifestyle and and save the planet uh we really hope our viewers and their children some of them might want to start this movement in kolkata there are a lot of videos that you can watch on youtube and instagram and um they like the organization sorry and reach out to us so you can help us start in kolkata us and your website as well so and there are some organizations in kolkata which are already taking doing this movement so while once have been a comes to kolkata you can perhaps reach out to bula tech for e waste garbage free india or bintex for recycling these have also partnered with uh, recyclers who have the pollution control board certification so great job navin dihan and keep doing the fantastic work that you are doing we are so so proud of you more power to you and thank you thank you sunira and uh, over to you now Thank you, Vihan. Thank you, Nav. Thank, Thank you, Swati. You. Very interesting, uh, you know, conversation. And I'm sure a lot of us inspired. I am inspired. I can tell you that for sure. And I'm getting those five dustbins in my uh, bedroom right away. I mm -hmm. promise you that. I will take a moment to felicitate these two young achievers on a donation of hundred meals each for COVID relief has been made on your behalf. Thank Akshay Patra is our chosen partner to execute the same. Friends, I'd like to mention here that Akshay Patra and their supporting organizations have served over six crore free meals towards COVID relief so far. I would now like to invite Thank you Nav, thank you Vihan. Thank, thank you, you so much. I'd now like to invite Manjri Agarwal to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you Sunita. 
Hello, Nav. Hello, Vihan. Um, absolutely inspirational talk. I think uh, till the youth of India and the youth of this world doesn't take charge of changing and making changes in this world, nothing is going to change. So it's just absolutely inspirational, amazing, the work that you all are doing. Thank you. And I think our generation, unfortunately, did not take care of the environment as much. And we're not leaving a, a better world for you all. But uh, it's wonderful to see you all taking the problem in your hands and doing something about it. So many, many congratulations. And thank you for this wonderful eye-opening talk as well. Um, a few people we would like to thank our moderator, Swati Saraghi, for this amazing session. Thank you for you are, your questions were on point and you really got some great information out. Our lead sponsor, DRIL, Damodar Ropeways Infrastructure Limited, media partner, Sunmark, gift partner, Print Factor, technology partner, ideation technology solutions. Um, uh, Shrata Nathani and Shrata Agarwal from Team Flow for the amazing coordination and the backstage management by Manjri Alma, Shrata Nathani and Shrata Agarwal. Um, it was all so smooth and beautifully done. And to our past presidents, past chairs, thank you for your support and enthusiasm always. And to our members, maybe together, like the inner spark within, thank you for your support and your time. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you again.